It seems like we've been training pretty much from day one to save ourselves in case of an emergency. You stop, drop, and roll in case of a fire, and like clockwork, we practice the Heimlich maneuver. But what if it isn't a human that needs emergency health care? What if it's your pet dog? From being able to define normal to specifying commands that would one day save your pet's life, here are five ways you can save your dog in an emergency. Let's get into it. Number five, define normal. You'd think a man would know the ins and outs of his best friend, right? That their beloved canine companions are as familiar to them as the back of their hand. Unfortunately, we've kept our understanding of our pets fairly constrained. What to feed them, when to feed them, and when to take them out for a walk. All of which might be essential but not complete when it comes to caring for a pet dog. In order to better care for your pet, you need to be able to define normal. What is normal? It is the right height and weight for their breed, their normal body temperature, normal respiratory rate, normal pulse rate, and normal blood pressure. Pet parents need to be able to understand their dog's normal vital signs and how to measure them. Most crucial of the four, however, are pulse and respiratory rate. Your pulse rate and your dog's is the amount of blood that is flown per minute. It is measured in beats per minute. That is, the number of times your heart's chambers empty out blood into your arteries. Pulse is usually measured by placing two of your forefingers into the inner surface of your dog's mid-thigh and then tracking their beats per 15 seconds and multiplying that by four. Respiratory rate coincides with the amount of oxygen that is being supplied to the organs per minute. It is measured in rate per minute and by examining the number of times your dog breathes in and out, that is their chest expansion per 15 seconds and then multiplying the number by four. Additionally, pet parents need to be well-versed about their pet's breed. A Chihuahua has different needs than an Irish Setter, who has different needs than a Rottweiler. Just because they're all canines doesn't mean that they have the same needs. Number 4. Keep a Tracker In order to become Pet Parent of the Year, you need to track down your pet's every movement, their sleep patterns, their relieving patterns, and any sort of modifications in their behavior. Essentially, you need to be a hawk at all times when it comes to caring for your pet. Fortunately enough, animals have a pretty standardized way of living. They don't have to get up and work. They don't have to stress about the economy. For the most part, all they do is get up, play, eat some, and then go back to bed. The downside, however, is the fact that we cannot directly communicate with our pets. For example, what if your pet has something sharp jammed into the paw that they can't get out on their own? If your pet isn't able to direct your attention towards the object, you'd pretty much be playing a game of charades with them to figure out what's been making them wail all day. Dogs communicate using sounds. Unfortunately, those sounds have little or no translations. What can we do then? Keep a close eye on them at all times. The easiest way to do so would be to keep a tracker or a daily record, something that elaborates on patterns. Let's say your pet has been acting somewhat introverted lately. Correlate their mood with your tracker and determine if this change has only just begun or if it has been recurrent. Trackers involve bowel movements too. Be prepared. Number three, teach them emergency commands. Dogs are like sponges. They soak up the information that you're relaying to them. For example, you can teach your dog to bounce a ball off their nose. Does it serve any real purpose? Not really, but it's fun. However, sometimes you need to be able to teach your pets emergency commands. What are emergency commands? They are a set of commands that allow your pet to understand an emergency situation. Some emergencies are pretty clear, and your pet would be receptive to the danger and act in a defensive manner. However, other dangers are a lot less obvious to canines. The human might recognize that something is amiss, but the dog would want to play some more. Emergency commands include come, stay, drop it. These commands might not seem like much, but they might just save your pet's life one day. For example, commanding your pet to let go of a suspicious looking stick might save them from getting ants in their mouth. Or commanding your pet to come to you might save you from getting bit by a bigger dog. As a pet parent, you are responsible for your pet's well-being. This is not only limited to food and sleep, although both elements are undoubtedly crucial for the well-being of your pet. You need to be able to train them to either identify emergency situations by themselves or follow your lead when directed to. 
Again, teaching a dog a new command is entirely possible. You can teach a dog a new trick at any age. All you need is patience and a handful of treats. Number 2. Emergency Pet Care it might be easier to tend to a pet when you know that something is amiss. For example, you can better understand the gravity of a situation if your pet has been wailing for a while. While a bite or a foreign object being lodged into their paws aren't pretty sights, they do pose an immediate threat. What would be an immediate threat? Choking, seizures, fainting, and heat strokes, to name a few. If your pet is choking, they probably have something lodged in their windpipe. They'll be violently coughing, trying to expel the object on their own. However, they'll need your help. The Heimlich maneuver is as effective on dogs as it is on humans. Although the method is altered in some ways to better accommodate their bodies, it remains largely the same. That is, cupping one hand with the other and approaching your pet from behind. Wrap your arms around the pet so that you'd be pushing up towards their ribs. Another method, the one commonly employed on infants, would be to lie them on their back over your knee and hit their backs thrice to make sure that they've expelled the object. Ascertain that the object has been dislodged not by the fact that your pet has stopped coughing, but that the object is physically out of the pet system. In any case, you need to take your dog to a vet after the immediate threat has been alleviated. There are a few pet clinics that operate all day. These clinics have rotating staff that stay in the clinic morning, evening, and night. Not all pet clinics in your vicinity would be open 24-7. One of the emergency numbers on your fridge, besides the fire department and the police, needs to be the number of the emergency veterinary station. Your pet looks at you as their provider and caretaker. Do not let them down by being inept with your skills. Try to take as many courses and classes as you possibly can to better understand emergency treatment for your pet dog. Number 1. Have First Aid Kits Handy You need to always have two at-home first aid kits handy, one for you and one for your pet dog. The one for you has the basics, bandages, needles, and such. The one for your pet needs additional equipment, such as medication for poison, specially designed bandages, and several other products that are sold exclusively for animals. If you want to go above and beyond for your dog, and who wouldn't want that, you might also consider creating an emergency evacuation kit for your pet too. The Center for Prevention of Disease and Disaster Management recommends emergency kits that include food, blankets, and muzzles for your pet dogs. Regularly update these kits with the latest innovations in home health care and check for the expiration of these objects to replenish them whenever needed. Your pet can't tell the difference between what's nutritious for them and what would poison them. These are things that they expect their pet parents to look after, as they rightfully should. Pet parents are human, which isn't a viable excuse to lax in this case you need to be able to differentiate between what is necessary and what is not in order to service your animal with the best possible care. What would you carry in your pet dog's at-home first aid kit? Do you know how to check for a dog's pulse and respiratory rate? Have you ever needed to perform emergency CPR on your animal? We'd love to hear from you. Leave us a comment down below. Oh, and if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like more pet-related content, subscribe to Inforama right now. Until then, We'll see you later.